A nice Pontefract top and barrel welcome to Mr. Simon Wilson. <laughs> Thanks so much. Uh, I love coming here. I always make you know to feel very welcome um, in this place, and uh, it's great to be back. Oh, it really is. The book is called "You Can Drum, But You Can't Hide." So, can we just start about? Can we just talk a little bit about drumming and what you got into drumming and what's the fascination? Okay. Uh, top of the pops, really. Thursday night, uh, watching all the glam rock bands, as you say, T-Rex, uh, David Bowie, the Sweet were my particular favourite though and uh, especially Blockbuster, where they had a, a kettle drums, you know, in the top of the pop studio, and it sort of stuck with me. And uh, I think, I don't know what year that was, 74, I think. Mm. But, uh, every, you know, I used to practice copying them, basically. I never had a drum lesson. I just picked it up as I went along. And so when we got the band at, at Altigrana, finally, um, we, you know, I was up and running, and uh, I've not stopped stents. I've stopped yeah. stents, yeah. And you famously got your first drum kit from Audi Grammar, is that? Yeah, we pinched it, uh, John Squire, uh, the guitarist from the Roses and I. Um, nobody used it anyway, it was in a music room in a prefab building. And it was stuck on the shelf for about three, four years. Not, nobody moved, covered in dust. So we just thought the Sex Pistols can do that. Nick their equipment to get going, that's alright, we'll do it as well. That's how we started. Because we got a PA from another another place, but I better not uh, incriminate us. <laughs> but it is true you have given a drum kit back to Autogram, haven't you? Yes, I did, a couple of years ago. Yeah, I went back with one. I didn't mention that I took theirs. Yeah. But it was very good. It showed me around the new music labs, which is amazing, you yeah, know, full of uh, banks and banks of keyboards and computers. Not like the place that I'm on. But I joined the fall in 86, did 11 years. And I was aware of them from the uh, 1977 onwards because we had a classmate, uh, Andy Wake, who used to buy all the stuff, listen to John Peel every night. And he used to go, go on about this fall, you know. He had a bit of a lisp, he used to go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've got Rose Wampo. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he, uh, he, basically, when This Nation Saving Grace came out, that was uh, when I thought, oh, well, this is actually really good. And, you know, I'd heard of them before. But uh, when that came out, it was still my favourite fall album. Right. I didn't play in it. My first one was Ben Sinister, That's right, yeah. which was uh, the one Mr. Farms came off, which is uh, still one of my favourite things I did with them. Yeah. Did it in Abbey Road. It was, you know, it was, uh, amazing. Great studio, great vibe. You can see why people go on about it. You know, having a magical sort of vibe to it, it actually has. Yeah. I like Mark, you know, he was a good boss. Out of all the singers I've worked with, probably one of the best ones. Certainly the funniest. <laughs> you know, he really was. And, and he was intelligent, though um, he'd go off on a tangent sometimes, a bit like a Walter Mitty. And, and claimed he worked for MI5. You know, they recruited him. But, you know, that's probably not a bad idea. Uh, he, he's a good listener. You know, he'd listen to people in pubs, what they were talking about. And he could see that. But I like that, you know. He's very generous as well. If any extra money came in, he'd go, yeah, lads, here's 500 for you each. The first sort of five, six years, and when we were on Phonogram Records, he was my mate, he was my best mate for a while. And we used to go out clubbing, you know, in town. Uh, and, and he actually took us to Venice on holiday, which was lo lovely of him, you know, back, back in uh, before my daughter was born in 95. And uh, it was had a fantastic time. But it's, I had to come up. I was uh, coming down from uh, I wasn't, you know, I had addiction problems and uh, I had to get back home quick after two or three days. Of that. I was, you know, uh, back in eight, the early 80s, a lot of Afghani heroin, cheap heroin, being imported into the country. And uh, we're hanging about at Andy Rourke's uh, at dad's house in Sale. It's a big estate there and it was rife. And I got sucked in, uh, as did a lot of people. Sandy's dad was away on business. He worked for Shell Chemicals, and uh, the mother had moved on with somebody else. So he was him and his three brothers. It was a free for all. Yeah. But that's where we listened to Grandmaster Flash and yeah. the funk, yeah. Sheik, you know, the Sister Sledge, yeah. all that stuff that, from that period. Yeah. So we had the band Free Party that we started, but we, had, we didn't have a singer. Uh, this is 1981. 
all came to a head when we got a um, free party, that is Johnny Marr, Andy Rock and I got arrested at a uh, at studio in Ancoat. We, um, we got, all got arrested and after that uh, Johnny just wanted to keep his nose clean because he, he, he so wanted to make it, you could tell, you know, he was ruthless yeah. and it's no surprise to me that he's uh, you know, done so well, Johnny. Yeah. And, I, and as I say in the book, he's the finest uh, guitarist of my generation. For me, you know, personally, I'm super. I'm not the nerdy man, I've had a great time. I've been all over the world with the fall for a long time, you know, and I'm really, really grateful for that. So I don't feel like an nerdy man. I sort of have lived the dream. I just haven't got a great big mansion in the the rest of them, but there you go. But it, it must have been out at the beginning when the Smiths took off. So it was, quickly. and the, of course, the, yeah. I, I'm not trying to numb it with the drugs. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. what I think happened. Yeah. Why I turned them down, yeah. you know. Not turn them down, because that had already happened. Yeah. But it took me a long while to get over that. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to be freezing cold in, the, yeah. you know, in this rehearsal room in Ancoats, you know, when I'm coming down yeah. um, the next day, because, you know, I need to score. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Andy Roth was a dead funky bass player, and yeah. uh, if he'd been there, it might have been different. Yeah. He was a lot closer to Andy than uh, Johnny still am, really. Yeah. But uh, we're still keeping in touch. He's in New York, Andy now, yeah. bass there. Yeah. Uh, it's very underrated. Not underrated. People know he's good, but he doesn't get the credit he deserves in those Smith songs. Yeah. So he played a you know a song within a song on that bass, yeah. and uh, he, he still does it today. Right. If you walk in a room set up, yeah. I, I, you know. But now we've got Stuart here. Where is he? Yeah. Stuart, he's our new bass player. He's very, very good. And he likes a bit of the funk as well, don't he? <laughs> <laughs> um, Chris is great. He, he came to uh, study architecture, uh, architecture in the early 80s. He's from South Shields. Jacked all that in because um, you know, he liked rock and roll. A bit like myself, you know. And uh, we kept in touch and about a year and a half ago he said I'm starting, I'm starting to play again. He, he was in a band called Dubset, he still is in a band called Dubset. Mm -hmm. But he didn't really play and he asked me to help him out. I've been with him ever since. And uh, we've done an album. We've got an EP coming out in uh, February. And uh, it's all systems go, you know. We're yeah. really enjoying it. Yeah. So I'm playing, you know, what, what, what I want to play now, yeah. rather than being told by somebody. We've got Riff tonight, uh, join us on keyboards. Is this your first one, Riff? Yeah. yeah. Really? <laughs> Could be my last year. <laughs> I do love playing, it's the only exercise I get now. <laughs> so, the more the merrier, really. You know. but it's just great to be back, I've got my mojo back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, we had a duo G, and um, it's a band that me and Sai put together about a year and a half ago, and it's gone through a few changes, but we've got our first record coming out in the end of February, and this is like a really nice warm-up for us, start of 2017, and it feels, uh, feels good, doesn't it? That sounded so professional, I mean, <laughs> <laughs>
Marcos y Calvin también. No, 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 no,